to the Fantasy Lobby DFS Podcast with hosts John and Pemba and James Grande. What is going on, everybody? Jonathan Pemba here bringing you your MLB DFS Playbook Podcast here, breaking down Monday's eight-game DraftKings main slate. Remember, go to fantasylam.com and check out everything we have going on there, fantasylam.com slash win. Give you access to all of our DFS content, premium content, Discord, you name it. Seven-day free trial going on right now, and we have a 40% off our monthly cost there with our annual subscription package. So become a member of the Family Alarm family today. You can also go to rtsports.com slash alarm, promo code alarm23, get a 100% deposit match. Up to $200 there. You can scan the QR code on the screen and take advantage of all the great offers over at rtsports.com. Uh, starting off here, we're going to go take a look at our DraftKings main slate. As I mentioned, we have eight games on the board here. Uh, no course, thankfully, so we don't have to worry about that. We do have some favorable pitching matchups that we're going to look to take advantage of here. Uh, top price pitcher on the slate is Freddy Peralta. Uh, just elite strikeout numbers from Peralta. Last start against Miami, six and a third, one earned nine strikeouts. He's had multiple double-digit strikeout games lately, a couple of nine strikeout games mixed in between. He's going up against a St. Louis Cardinals team. Uh, that obviously has given him some trouble a little bit this year, but we know that that lineup uh, and that team is certainly uh, has had struggles at times uh, this season with consistency here. Uh, the 11-3 for Peralta, you need the elite strikeouts. On a little bit of a, a medium-sized slate, I don't mind getting there. Again, 33, 27, 30, and 33 fantasy points. You see the stretch here, 27, 37, 20, 43. So uh, for about you know a month and a half now, he's been one of the best pitchers in baseball, uh, willing to ride out the current form version of Freddie Peralta here, averaging 26 fantasy points over his last 10 starts. If you want to look next, though, I'm not really looking at Wheeler or Verlander here. My next starting pitcher would actually be Michael Waka. You got him at home against the Colorado Rockies. I know he's been kind of up and down lately, but, you know, tough matchup against the Dodgers last time out. Philly's not exactly the easiest uh, spot for anybody here either. Um, I'm willing to give him a look. Again, we've been going at Colorado. We've even been going at Colorado in Coors. Uh, they're home here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give an opportunity for Michael Walker against a weak Rockies lineup. Uh, much better at home this year for Walker as well as you see. 2.55 ERA and just $8,900 presents a nice mid-tier price tag for him believe it or not i'm actually going to look at lance lynn here as well i know the tigers have some guys that have been doing some damage you know spencer torgerson really leading the way uh, but they also strike out a ton uh and while the strikeout numbers lately for lance lynn have not been good uh he's facing teams that don't really strike out san diego miami atlanta boston uh he's going to get a good opportunity to rack up some strikeouts here against detroit i do like this spot for him he obviously faced them already this year Six innings, one earned, five strikeouts, had five walks in that game, but uh, still came out of it with 20 fantasy points. Great win equity here with the Dodgers, the offense behind him. So I do like Lance Lynn at $8,400. Uh, and then my last starting pitcher I'm going to have in my player pool here is going to be Brian Wu. Uh, five and two-thirds shutout, eight strikeouts against the Angels in his last start. Uh, obviously had the sixth shutout against Oakland already. Uh, just a few starts ago, they were five strikeouts. So, uh, I like the pitch counts on the rise. He's faced his team and dominated them already this season. Good strike up potential at just $7,200. At the catcher position, there's just one guy. Uh, and obviously, if he's not in the lineup, well, check out the, the uh, MLB DFS playbook there by Henry Wilson. Tune in at 5 o'clock Houston for the live stream. We'll get you updated. Uh, but for me, it's Luis Campusano. Uh, he's hitting lefties really well. Gets tie block. Uh, 282 average over the last 10. It has a homer during that stretch. Uh, Luis Campusano is my plug-and-play catcher at $3,200 today. At first base, I kind of like a uh, first baseman in the same matchup here. Uh, you can spend up if you want. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and tell you not to play Olsen or Freddie Freeman or Bryce Harper. If, you, if that's the way you're leaning, go for it. Uh, but Justin Turner and Nathaniel Lowe, I think, are both in play. Cutter Crawford's had some struggles against, left, uh, against left-handed hitters. Uh, and Justin Turner has been mashing lefties all season long. And then if you wanted a punt play, the Red Sox did recall Bobby Badal back here. Um, ton of power at the AAA level this year. 33 homers. Uh, we know what he's been. He's been a, basically a 4A player during his time here with the Red Sox. Uh, but if he does get the call with a lefty on the mound here, um, you know, just know the power potential is there for a one-off play for Dahlbach. Again, we'll have the full playbook out by Henry Wilson. There's certainly some other mid-tier options you could look at, like Jose Abreu against a John Means. 
for example, or if you wanted to go Torkelson against Lynn, you could go there in the mid-tier. But for me, I'm going to stick with this low Turner combo. And then if I want to get different, I'll play Bobby Dahlbeck. At second base, you have Mookie Betts at the very top. Again, elite spot against a lefty, 400 ISO against left-handed pitching this season. Uh, down in the mid-tier range, we have Bryson Stott against Kyle Wright. Again, willing to go Stott here. I know recent form hasn't been great, but overall in the year, he's been pretty good. And you got Wright uh, coming back from his injury. It was kind of shaky there uh, early on to get things going. Amad Rosario hits lefties really well. He gets Erod here. Uh, and then for some value, I think uh, we can look at Reyes homered on uh, Sunday at his back-to-back games or three straight games that hits back-to-back games and RBIs uh, still hitting over 300 for the year $3,200 for the Red Sox at third base here. I do like Alex Bregman in this spot against John means again, Bregman has historically hit lefties. Well, uh, Astros offense is, you know, really turned it up of late uh, willing to run Bregman's there against a returning uh, means who's only made a few appearances uh, since coming back. Devers, I'm always okay going up against a lefty. People tend to shy away from lefty-lefty spots, but Devers is someone that can handle lefties pretty well, uh, as is Manny Machado. Machado is probably my favorite lefty, uh, or favorite third baseman, rather, of this group here at 5K against Ty Block. Uh, 326, 951 average, so current form is really good. And then again, he hits lefties really, really well. Uh, in the mid-tiers, you have Eugenio Suarez against the lefty, against J.P. Sears. Sears gives up a ton of home runs. We know Suarez has the power against left-handed pitching. And then for some value, uh, Kike Hernandez here against Erod again. It's lefties well. Current form for Era, uh, for Kike Hernandez, 300 with an 838 uh, OPS as well. Looking pretty good there. Moving on over to the shortstop position here. Uh, Corey Seager, again, Cutter Crawford struggles against lefties. Seager's averaging 11 fantasy points per game. He's been unbelievable on the year. It just doesn't stop with him. 317 average, 1,000 OPS over the last 10 with three homers during that stretch. If you can find the money to pay $6,700 uh, on this slate, it's going to be pretty appealing. Same goes for Trey Turner, 375 and 1,100 OPS, four homers over the last 10. I know it's been a little bit since he's homered, four-game stretch. Uh, but I'm willing to run Turner here. He's just been unbelievable. So spending up at short certainly seems appealing. You have Machado. Xander Bogarts is also a pretty interesting play here. He's on fire right now uh, for the Padres. And then for some value, uh, it's unfortunate that we missed out on Sedan Raffaella for his cheap price tags. Uh, the Alex Cora and the Red Sox just weren't playing him consistently enough. That could, that could change here now, uh, but he's up to $3,500. I'd still be willing to run him out there at short and outfield. Uh, on this slate. And then Miguel Rojas, uh, a guy that maybe you've forgotten about, but against left-handed pitching this year, or he's been pretty good. Uh, and on the in the last 10 games, 344 to 900 OPS during that stretch. So a little bit of a punt play for short for uh, those maybe looking to spend up for, uh, you know, like Mookie Betts or somebody of that like to with, with the cost is expensive and you have that cheap shortstop to plug into your lineup. At the outfield position, again, we mentioned Mookie Betts here. Uh, if Ronald Acuna plays, will be in. Julio Rodriguez is in a great spot. Both Jordan and Tucker hit lefties really well, even though they are lefties. Fernando Tatis hits lefties really well. Kyle Schwarber, we know, has a lot of power upside. So I'm not going to rule out anybody here uh, in this 5,500 and above range. For me, they're all very much uh, in play and in my player pool. When we work our way down into the mid-4K range, uh, Duvall and Ozuna, both just big power guys. Uh, I think you can find room to get them in your lineups here. Uh, Teoscar Hernandez against the lefty has been a plug-and-play for us all, all season long. Again, I know current form for some of these Mariners don't look great, but J.B. Sears has not been a good pitcher. Gives up a lot of power, a lot of power this season. So something you can look uh, to attack. Uh, some other values here. Again, looking at uh, Ethan Carter going up against um, going up against Cutter Crawford here. Uh, it's one of the spots that I like. Again, you get a lefty, you get that Rangers lineup exposure here. All right, Evan Carter, get that lineup exposure here. Uh, 3,600, has a little power, some speed. 280 and 864 OPS at $3,600. Uh, could fit in for a value play once you get outside of that uh, 4K range. Again, we'll have a full playbook out for everybody. Henry Wilson will be on the job. Let's uh, finish the show up today. Uh, building out a lineup. Uh, I'm going to go ahead with Waka, and I'm going to go with Wu. At catcher, I mentioned I like Campusano here. At first base, I'm going to go with a Ranger stack here against Cutter Crawford. Uh, with low, I will go uh, Seager here, a little two-man dance, and then Carter, as I mentioned. 
at 36. Uh, second base, we're going to spend down a little bit here. We'll go Reyes at 32. Third base, we have Kike Hernandez. That gives us 47.50 for an outfielder. We go Mookie. It's 2900 $2,900. Uh, Jerkson Profile against Lefty. Perfect here. So uh, we got a couple of Padres. We got three man Texas stack. We got two man for Dodgers fitting Mookie in uh, and Seeger in our lineups. This is pretty impressive here uh, with Kike Hernandez, uh, Pablo Reyes uh, in there as well as Michael Lockett and Brian Wu. No money left over in this lineup here. Uh, again, that's a quick breakdown of the Monday eight game slate. Come back live at five o'clock Eastern. We'll have the live stream to give you all the lineup updates that you guys need to dominate tonight's slate.